a Bible believing church. There are key ways you should always have on your mind. What is pride in this context? Pride is listening to yourself. Obeying yourself. Listening to man. Church of Mama says. Now what is humility in this context? Obeying God and God alone. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. God does what? He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. What's the meaning of pride? What are examples of things pride can do? Why must you be going to church? Why must you listen to that man? You came here, you only have two years visa. And you say you have to pray and fast before you know what to do. Instead of just going and asking people what to do. <laughs> Amen. By strength shall no man prepare. You will read my role. There are people that think they have succeeded. Hear what I'm telling you. A time is coming when they know that they have failed. Let me use this brief opportunity to tell you about Africans here. Listen. From the time God I had this story, it's about like 40, 45 years. They said they had a policy before. That is called white man or white people policy in Australia. Listen very well. I don't want anybody to sleep. If you want to sleep, stand up because this message is important. They had white man's policy, which means white people's policy, which means nobody will be given citizenship in Australia except white people. And that law was broken or was a kind of allowed to accept Africans just in the past 40 years. Are you getting my point? It's not everything that I'm going to say. But hear this. When they made that law, who knows? But adventure they said, okay, we start accepting the people that are having war. Maybe through Commonwealth or through United Nations. We start absorbing people of black colors to help them. They might have other intentions. They started bringing you out. Now, in real sense, we are there people that made that law to absorb you. We are the people that made the law to start bringing Africans. No, there were people. Why the white people? <laughs> they made the law. The white Australians, they made the law and said, from now we start accepting Africans. Am I making sense? Does it mean they can come to go there tomorrow and say that law is no more? Is it possible? <laughs> is it possible? <laughs> they sat down. They said, let's start accommodating them. Let's start. Who knows? It might be okay. There are places our children will not want to walk. <laughs> there are places our children might not want to be fitting. Let's bring them to fit in that place. Let's help them and they help us. Am I making sense? And that was how they brought the first set we should be, according to, if that was around 40, 45 years old, that, uh, uh, years, years ago, let's say around 30 years ago, they now brought in the first stage after the arrangement. And who did they bring in? They brought in the people that has been ravaged, that has been, you know, distorted 
by war. They've not tested liberty. They've not tested freedom. Listen to me very well. I'm telling you something that if you are wise, it will help you, guide you in this place. And when they brought in those people, those people saw like going to a party, drinking, having women anyhow, having sex with white people, it blew their mind. And they said that I can go to a party, I can mess up. But they never knew there was a law before they came that had been guiding others that were here. Hear what I'm telling you. Foolish ones among them went as far as impregnating two or three women, white people. And they think they were playing games. They were celebrating, having money, having support, finance. And when the law was now interpreted to them, when their eyes opened, listen to me very well. And they found out that all those children they have given birth to, to almost three or four women. I'm talking about the first set that came. It's their responsibility. If government is giving you $300 and you have 303 children, rather, <laughs> sorry, you will give each of them $70, $70. Pay your rent. How much is left with you? You might only be left with about $20. Because the law that have brought you is also very strong. You can't escape it. So when this first set came, they were telling the people in Africa, we are enjoying, but they don't know they were tying themselves. They were killing, putting themselves. Listen to me carefully so that you will not regret like others. So about 10 years later, they now found out that we are in bondage. We have made a mistake. They started flagging for others that are coming. <laughs> we are suffering here. They are not suffering. It's their foolishness that is killing them. They are saying nothing is happening. This is not a good place. This is a lie. They didn't hold their John Thomas. <laughs> and they didn't hold their gluttony. So foolishly they tied themselves and made this place uncomfortable. And rubbish the names of the Africans here. Hear what I'm telling you. Now they are regretting it. Let me tell you. If Africans are 70 men here. And 100 women here. All the men are lazy. Only women here are hard working. Mark, put me. Men that are here. Most Africans. 80% of them are women. And women that are here, Africans, 80% of them are men. In fact, here it is women that are behaving and behaving like men. I have seen it, I've checked it. The men are the weaker vessel. The women are the ones that are strong and bold. Are the ones facing challenges. But anything chickens the men. <laughs> Imagine. There was a time arm robbers stopped. Luxurious boss in Nigeria, they were doing. And when they stopped them, they said, All the ladies stay one side, and all the men stay one side. One man went and stayed where the ladies were. <laughs> they said, They said, All the ladies one side. And all the men one side. The man said, no, I know what I'm doing. He said, are you right? You are wearing trousers. And I don't see any breasts. Why are you in the where the women are? He said, because I'm not a man. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, if I was a man, I would have collected that dog from you. <laughs> how can I allow him to follow me? If you are a man, I'm a man. I would have collected that. How can you intimidate me? Because you're having gone. Let me just stay where I belong because all these ones that are claiming they are men, they are not men. How if you are a man, somebody shouldn't control you? Mm. Was, was, that, was that logic? Yeah. The guy said, let me just tell you, I'm not a man. If I'm a man, I remove that 
happens from you. That's what men do. Men face challenges well. I'm telling you the truth. Why? So this is what has happened. So the first thing that came messed up. The second ones that are coming now, the, 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 the first one are putting fear in them. But thank God for the third ones that are coming like us. We are turning around the whole situation. Are you, am I making sense, George? We are not going to believe the lies of those people. We are not going to believe their mistakes. Let me tell you, that is why you, it will be hard for you to see men here living responsible life. They have messed up the status quo and in their minds, all they come to Australia to do is good time. Have sex with every white woman. You know, all, that's how they are wasting food everywhere. That's what, that's what they are thinking. Are you talking about all that in great foolishness? If you can follow that step here, oh my God. Change your mentality. Forget about it. You came here, the people has blessed you, bless them. Africans in the next generation, if they are not careful, they themselves, they put, they put themselves back to second slavery. It's not about the white people, it's about the law. The law is well defined. If you come here wise, you make yourself, what do you, what? Can I tell you something? If you interview any man, how do you know foolish men? If you interview any man, and any man tells you that what is in between the legs of women are different, please call that man a fool. Am I making sense? If any man tell you that what is in between the legs of women, if any man tell you that is different, though the one that is black or, or yellow, or it has different tests, or the, that man is a fool, just buy a ticket for him and send him to hell. Do you know that's the same way the devil deceives us? He will come the same woman who will change his shell. Give it another name. Give it another color. It's the same pleasure. It's the same thing. Why must you go and enter into another trouble? Instead of just having that, it's the same thing. Why not you close your eyes and be moving around? It's better for you than allowing the devil to deceive you with shells. Church, I might make sense. I might be talking about what I know. I know what I'm saying. I'm making a point. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Who is the proud? The one that listens to his flesh. Who is the humble? The one that listens to God. How will you see the grace of God in Australia? Stop listening to what you are hearing. People that are telling you how to succeed and how to succeed. Listen to God. Humble yourself before the Lord Almighty. Do what He has asked you to do. There are a lot of distractions in this nation. There are things if you don't achieve now, you will not have time again to achieve it in life. Whenever anybody asks you and say, what is the secret of Pastor Joseph Almighty? As my children hear this, I'm going to tell it to you now. The secret of my anointing is this, humility. I've never dishonored any leader God has placed above me. Never does it mean they have not hurt you. If I tell you how far they have hurt me, if they hurt you that way, 10% of it you will run away, you will dishonor them. That's 
the secret. I discovered this any time in my ministry. God resists the proud and gives grace to the heart. Who is a humble person? No matter how what you are passing through, no matter how what you are passing through from your father, no matter what you are passing through from your pastor, no matter if it is your right pastor, if it is the one God has called you to be on, no matter what you are passing through from your mother, no matter what you are passing through from your leader, please don't make any step until you hear from God. Are you getting it? I'll show you two examples, then I close. Two examples. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 2. Please, first read us. Two examples. God resists the proud. Try it, you will see your life on the family. First Samuel chapter. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 5. Try it. Try it. Listen to God and forget man. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. Listen very well, yep. For he loved Anna, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Listen, God, because I know you, you are tired, right? But I'm going to make you get strong, you know? Now, look at now. He gave a worthy portion, that's her canal, to Hannah. Okay, continue. And her adversary also provoked her soul. Okay. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Go and get that fast, fast, please. Go and get that clue from that that fast run. Now look at God. God is coming. Come, come, come. Bring it. Open it. One, only one. Only one. Beautiful. Yep. Church, watch out. Close our face. Use it. I know it. I know the hands. I hope it's not there. Hand. I think you are greeting, eh? What has God done? Covered her wounds. Closed her. Please read it now. From the first one again. But Come now, you are God now. But unto Anna he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Anna. But the Lord has shut up her womb. The Lord has shut up her womb. And her adversary provoked her soul. Oh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. The Lord did what? Now, church, I want to ask you a question. According to Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says, if God opens a door, no one can close it. If God closes a door, no one can. Is it true? So does it mean if God has shut her womb, can anybody open the womb? No. Who will be the one to open it? God. Who has the power to open it? God. Who must be the one if it must be opened? God. Are you getting it now? What is grace? God doing by himself what he has promised. Is that right? Yeah. God has shut up her womb and God is the most powerful. No one opened that womb. Now look at Hannah. Hannah wanted a child. Hannah has been praying for a child for how many years? 20, almost 20 years, believe me. But let's, if we calculate it according to the story in the Bible, it's about 12 years. But I know it's more than that. And Hannah has been praying the same prayer for how many years? 20 years. I'm going to show you. It's going to shock you. Are you there? Get to nine. Start nine. Start nine. Yeah. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. Okay. And after they had drunk. Yeah. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a pool. Who was the Eli? The spiritual father. Now this is God. Can I borrow you, Brother Sylvester? Please, sir. Can I borrow you? Okay. No, I want to borrow you, borrow you, borrow you. I want to borrow you. When I borrow you, I'll be, 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 bring you back. Sir. Now, this is... Okay, let's say God. God, sit down here. This is your altar. Now, this is the pastor, Ella. Now, this lady has been coming to church to pray. He has been praying. Continue, sir. So, Ella rose up after they had eaten the shiloh. Now, Eli, the priest, sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. He was doing his normal duty, doing what he's supposed to do, and this woman was there praying, okay? And she was in bitterness of soul. Continue. And prayed unto the Lord. Okay. And wept so. And wept so, huh? And she vowed a vow and, and said, Okay. O Lord of hosts, mm. if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget 